Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. Today, um, I am here with Noah Kadner, the guest on the show. Noah joins us. He's the marketing director for FCP Works. So definitely check that out, fcpworks.com. Mm -hmm. Fantastic consulting and assistance with Final Cut Pro 10. Awesome. Okay, Very I'm nice to have you on the show. Happy to be here. You're going to show us some tips about customizing the keyboard? Uh, yeah, well, you know, um, this is interesting. A lot of people say that you can't customize Final Cut Pro 10 a lot or that there's commands that are missing, but what they don't realize is that a lot of the uh, key commands are kind of sort of, I wouldn't say hidden, but they're not assigned by default. So let's take a quick look. If we go into the command set here, the command editor, and I do this kind of every time there's a new version that comes out, I will sort by modifiers, and suddenly you see all of these keyboard commands that are actually not assigned. Oh, just by sorting by modifiers brings them all to the top. Right, you can see anything that's already been assigned you can see we'll have something here right. at the very least. Right. But if you go, if you just sort the entire thing by modifiers, you see all these commands that are not assigned to anything by default. And this is oftentimes where a new command might show up. Might show up here. In oh, a new version. Very so, good. I like it. Good way to go search. Let me close this out for a sec. Let's say, for example, I'm doing some color correcting of this beautiful sunset shot here, and I'm kind of mousing around a lot. I don't have a control surface or anything, which would be nice, but I'm kind of doing this pure mouse and it's kind of tedious. I got to click over here onto each pane just to get my commands. But if I go back into the command editor and I'm going to go into the search field and type in color. Color, yeah. Now I've got a bunch of stuff I can actually assign. So say for example, I want to first assign the pucks. I've got next puck. Pucks are these little guys over here. Right. I'm going to assign the puck to the right arrow, and it's going to tell me that I need to modify this because this is the original, the default command set that comes with Final so you're Cut. you're making a copy of the command set. So I'm going to make a copy, and I'm going to mm -hmm. call this Noah's Color Awesomeness. And now I've assigned next puck to the right arrow. I'm going to go ahead and do previous puck. Seems a little hard to see the it's a, whole it's a little, command. It's a little tricky. It you know what? stretch it out. I'm going to just go ahead and further search by puck. Okay, so this is previous puck. I'm gonna put this on the left arrow. Boom. Got previous and next. Save that. Close. Saving and closing are two separate buttons. Oh, crazy. Yeah. So now look at that. I can I'm I'm keyboard commanding around the pucks, ah, which means to each one. Okay. all of a sudden now I can do this with just one hand on the keyboard. And now you're tapping the up and down arrows to adjust it. Right. So left and right arrows to select each puck and mm -hmm. up and down arrows to adjust. Okay. So that's nice, but what if I want to take that a step further because I've still got this issue of having to toggle back and forth between the various panes. Yes. So I'm going to go back into the command editor and I'll go ahead now and search for pane. And here we go. I've got color, exposure, and saturation. Let's see, colors first. So I'm going to assign that to one. I'm going to go saturation to two. Just the number one with no modifier keys. Yeah, well, you know, wow. I mean, this the, the, the glory yeah. of this thing about this is since you've got basically Easy. unlimited amounts of keyboard command sets that you yes. can assign. I mean, let's just say I'm going to make this into a very quick color correction only, and I could even correspond that with a layout if I wanted to. Well, this is great because you don't have to hold a, a modifier key down to do this. Exactly. So finally, I've got exposure. There we go to three. Boom. Save, close, and now I'm able to quickly toggle back and forth between the three panes. I so, can do all the pucks. So one, two, three to go to each pane. So and literally, right arrows to select the pucks, and right. then up and down arrows to move the pucks. Right. So literally, now I can quickly, quickly cruise through stuff. And this is where it gets even more exciting. If I deselect that clip, yes. Now, this color correction window still being open is going to affect whatever like shot is now under. So yep. now I'm in this shot. I'm going to go, boom, do some quick color here. And all you're doing is tapping the keys. And I'm completely on the keyboard only. I'm not touching the mouse at all. Same thing, saturation. Let's bring that up. Exposure. Let's bring that a little down. Boom, done. Next, that, next shot. To to, are you hitting Command-2 to go back to make the timeline active again to go to the next clip? Actually, no. In this case, I'm just space bar. You're just hitting the space bar to go right. to play. Okay. So I'm never. I'm actually never going back into the timeline wow. to, to make okay. it active. It's just staying in the in the You're color board the, the entire time. I hit the space bar to play to the next clip. So I'm just kind of so I could just blast through an entire sequence right. without ever letting my hands off the keyboard. 
Fantastic. So just kind of speed color grading. Very cool tip. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of these, uh, what, what I call warp speed editing techniques of, of keyboard shortcuts or other ways to really speed up the workflow. And that, that's a great one. Much appreciated. So that's my Thanks tip. Awesome. Thank you for coming on the show. <laughs> my pleasure. Hope you guys found that useful. I certainly did. Uh, check us out rippletraining.com for tutorials on all this stuff. And check out FCP Works. And thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.